This is GTV. The legend continues. I've been in Japan a long time, getting close to 20 years actually, and over the many years, if there's one thing I have always loved about Japan, it's that Japan always surprises and never disappoints. Wait, is that two things or just one? If you're a game fan, you know that beyond the games themselves, all kinds of neat side stuff is always being put out. Toys, yeah, of course. Food, sure, every now and then. But then, once in a blue moon, something so weird, cool, amazing, and unexpected falls from the sky, and you don't know what to say. All you can do is buckle up and enjoy the ride. That blue moon came around again in February 2020. And that thing is this. An RPG-themed soap opera. That doesn't quite define it. Actually, I don't know what to properly call it. Let's just take a look and be amazed that this crazy mishmash ever happened. On February 1st, 2020, NHK debuted a TV show called Densetsu no Okasan. In English, The Legendary Mother, a soap opera with RPG elements. Yeah, the trials of modern day life relationships, paying the rent, dealing with your co-workers, and all the rest, seamlessly blended with magic, monsters, hit points, and safe states. The show is based off of a manga series, and honestly, that looks like garbage. So I don't know how that became this, a full-fledged TV show with actors, costumes, sets, and what have you. Now I must apologize, you'll only be seeing still images and I think you know that some TV production companies really dislike having their work shown on the internet. If I show this in motion, the video will disappear, and maybe me along with it. For whatever reason, NHK really, really doesn't want this out. You know, there's actually tons and tons of Japanese TV shows just floating around out there. And whoever put the shows up do little cheats to trick the computer into thinking it's an original work, not something recorded off the TV. But for this show, zero clips or re-uploads exist, except those officially sanctioned by NHK. Some tried, and, well, they didn't last more than a day. I guess I learned my lesson from the last time I tried to share an RPG-themed TV show with the world, only to have TV Tokyo strike me into near extinction. The show stars Mei. She is a legendary, world-famous mage who, ten years ago, helped rid the world of the evil Demon King. In the ten years since then, peace has prevailed across the land. Mei got married, had a baby, and enjoys her home life. But, like in so many RPGs, the Demon King has returned, and so Mei must rejoin her original party and set out on an all-new quest. Joining her is Bella, a thief and Mei's longtime friend. There's also Poco the Paladin, Kukai, a monk and new member of the group, and Masamune, the hero and leader of the party. Also pivotal to the story is Mobu, Mei's husband. He likes to laze around at home and play video games all day. Then there's Kato, an old flame from Mei's university days, who now works as an advisor to the king. Lastly, there's Sachan. He's the baby. As expected, the Demon King threatens the peace once again and the party sets out on another quest. What could go wrong? Well, in this world, things aren't quite the same as your typical RPG. You see, May's world is our world. TV, cell phones, internet, every modern convenience exists. And yet, it's still infested with monsters. Magic still exists, and there's still a certain medieval vibe to it. The show's opening and closing are also voiced by famous Japanese YouTube channel, Mushroom. Well, at least they're big in Japan. Also, each episode ends with the game being saved. The original file, which is presumably saved at the point the world was saved 10 years ago, still exists. And since the world was saved, time moved on. Mei now has a baby and everyone else is pretty busy in their careers too. The work-life balance is key to Densetsu no Okasan. I mean, you know how hard it is to take care of your own kids while trying to pay the bills. So just imagine it, if the way you pay the bills requires lots of HP and MP, 
And that RPG world is mixed with a nice dose of 2D Dragon Quest style graphics as well. Over eight episodes, May and the rest have to juggle their lives while fighting the forces of evil. May is summoned by the king to join the fight, though as a stay-at-home mom, she isn't ready. She tries to recruit her mother to take care of the baby, but after a miscast teleportation spell sends the baby somewhere else, she tries daycare, only to find out it's full. May asks her husband Mobu to help around the house. He isn't very thrilled at first. May meets up with the old party and rekindles her friendship with Kato as well. When Mobu falls asleep playing TV games while he's supposed to be watching the baby, May gives up on him and takes Sachan with her. The plan goes south when Sachan gets caught in a battle. The Demon King tries to use modern entrapments to gain control of the kingdom. Masamune quits the party when the Demon King opens a free daycare and can't resist. The others learn about it by watching him go crazy on TV. Bella learns she spent too much time away from home and too much time at work when she finds out her 8-year-old son knows how to take care of himself fully without any help from mom, making Bella feel guilty she forced him to grow up too fast. Also, as a thief, we get to look at how Bella's job actually works, as the thief's den is set up like some kind of accounting office, and there are daily and monthly quotas the thieves must meet to keep the company afloat. Kukai and Poco get married, only after knowing each other for two weeks. Also, Kukai's parents are very excited at the news of a future grandson, as he can inherit the family's secret magic spells. Except Poco doesn't want to have children, and it really creates a problem. By the middle of the show's eight episodes, Mobu feels pretty down about himself and enters a fighting tournament in an effort to win the cash prize and show Mei he can be a good provider. However, Mei had the same idea, and they end up fighting each other head to head. Then she confides in Kato how she may have married the wrong guy. Mobu then has a dream where he joins the Demon King and he's forced to battle by a controller, which is pretty funny. The King holds a summit where he and the Demon King try to amicably agree to peaceful terms. This is actually just a ruse as the party intends to ambush the Demon King, but things go awry when Mei is distracted by many phone calls from Mobu and is unable to cast the spell needed to defeat the Demon King in time. Mei goes home and tells Mobu she can't trust him and leaves with Sachan to stay with Kato and his family. By now, the Demon King has unleashed the forces of evil upon the kingdom, leading the party to travel to the Demon King's fortress for the final battle. The night before, Mei discovers a journal Mobu left behind, chronicling all the progress that he and Sachan have made together, proving that he can be a good, responsible man. She returns home and apologizes to Mobu, not realizing how he's grown as she's been so busy with work. When the party confronts the Demon King, the battle is intense. The Demon King has learned much in 10 years, and what can defeat the party isn't swords or magic, but insults. Hurtful words that tear at the heart of each member of the party. Poco, Kukai, and Bella are taken down, but Mei fights back, realizing they're just words. Then, the Demon King offers Mei an escape to restore the save file that's been on the memory card for 10 years. With it, Mei can go back to her old life. All the troubles she's faced now will be gone. Oh, and conveniently enough, the Demon King will still come back in 10 years, but without any opposition, and can conquer the world with ease. Mei declines, saying that though her life isn't perfect, it's her life, and if she could do it all over again, she'd do everything the same. Then Mei slays the Demon King and saves the kingdom. With the quest finished, Mei returns home for some well-deserved family time. The king throws a celebration for everyone at the castle. Mei decides to keep working as a mage and stay with the party permanently, knowing Sachan and Mobu will be fine at home together. As the party sets off on another adventure, Mei reflects on her life and realizes that it really is the way she wants it to be and overwrites the old save file, making it impossible to return to her old life. That ends the show. And even though it was only eight episodes, this was an amazing series. It was interesting, funny, tense, and in some places a little sad as well. It's funny to think such a thing would exist, but if you consider that every writer and actor, as well as all of us watching at home, grew up playing RPGs for 30 plus years, it doesn't seem like such a far-fetched idea. I can't say if there will be a season two, but I really hope so. After all, much like the oh-so-many role-playing games this show borrowed from, a hero's quest is never done.